it is impossible to realize our goals while discriminating against half the human race. As study after study has taught us, there is no tool for development more effective than the empowerment of women. Kofi Annan, former UN Secretary General. In some parts of the world today, this is a radical idea. The first time I learned about some of the human rights injustices suffered by girls around the world every day was when I read a National Geographic article called Too Young to Wed. The article described places in India and Africa where girls as young as five years old are married against their will, often to fully grown men. In this image, these two young girls, one of them six years old and the other not much older, are the new brides of grown men several times their age. I could not believe what I had read, and I started to do some more research on my own. I became more and more horrified as I learned about such human rights violations as child marriages, bride burning, female genital mutilation, and honor killings. One thing each of these practices has in common is the suppression and utter dehumanization of women. Last fall, I was bombarded with college applications, and these applications made me sit down and really think about who I am and what I care about. <clears throat> One application in particular was extremely difficult. Have any of you heard of Tulane's infamous Vox project? Well, for those of you who haven't, it looks like this. <laughs> now do something. So for my Vox project, I made a four minute video about the human rights violations suffered by girls around the world. I made a website for my video, it only takes a girl.org. On my website, I put a donate button that links to the Girl Effects page in hopes that after seeing my video, some people might be inspired to give to the cause. The Girl Effect is an organization that supports the health and education of women around the world. I posted a link to my YouTube video to my own personal Facebook, thinking that some of my friends might want to see my project. But soon my friends started sharing it, and some of their friends shared it, and friends of friends, and so on. Before I knew what was happening, my video had started to go viral. Today, it has been viewed over 370,000 times on YouTube, and it has been seen in every country in the world. For a scholarship project that I imagined would probably be viewed by a couple hundred people at most, I was floored. <sighs> but it was not all good news. As more and more people saw the video, the comments on the YouTube page got nastier and nastier. Everyone knows that, the, that YouTube is crawling with internet trolls. But some of, the, some of the comments on my video were truly horrifying. Some were simply rude, but others were full of sexism, racism, religious intolerance, and even pedophilia. The anonymity of YouTube allows people to post the most rude and inappropriate things. They're, they hide behind their usernames and feel empowered to say the most, rude, the most ludicrous comments. However, some people who saw my video started sending me emails, and these were almost completely nice and supportive. People emailed me asking what they could do to help, if they could show my video to their class at school or their church congregation, and things like that. A couple of months after I posted my video to the web, Global Giving announced on their Facebook page that I had, Global Giving, um, that I had raised over $30,000 for the Girl Effect and, and directed over 5,000 visitors to the Girl Effect page. Again, for a small scholarship project, this was truly astounding to me. So where do I go from here? Well, I did get that scholarship to Tulane, and I am so happy to be here. After my video went viral, I was interviewed by a Teen Life website, by a woman writing a book on bravery, bravery in teen girls, and by two women on a cross-country bike ride making a documentary. I also started my own blog and have become more involved in activism through social media like Twitter and Facebook. So a kind of interesting story about a girl and a video. But why did I come here today to talk to you all about it? Well, I believe I boiled this story down to three basic morals. Number three, don't let the haters bring you down. <laughs> Wherever you go and whatever you do, there will always be someone behind you telling you that you can't, that you're not good enough, that you'll never amount to anything. This person might be rude commenters on YouTube, your cranky old grandfather, or even the voice inside your own head. You have to learn when to listen to criticism and doubt, and when to trust yourself despite it. After all, for every rude YouTube comment, there is a sweet and encouraging email. <laughs> Number two, find your passion. It is important to be passionate about something. It almost doesn't matter what. My passion is for the health and education of girls worldwide, but maybe you care about something else. 
Maybe your cause is saving the rainforest or rebuilding Katrina damaged homes in New Orleans. Whatever it is, you can do something about it. Don't think that you're too young, too old, too busy, or too insignificant to make a difference. No one person can do everything, but every person can do something. Which brings me to my number one moral of the story. There is a Latin phrase that goes, abilo qui multum, dator multum requiritor, which means, to whom much is given, much is required. This is, a, this is roughly equivalent to the famous Spider-Man quote, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Not all of us in this room possess great power, but each of us here today is privileged in some way. Being literate, being, living in the United States, or even being able to attend an event like this is a privilege so many people around the world will never know. I feel incredibly lucky to have been born in the United States, where opportunities are not denied me based on my gender. I wish every girl, every person in the world could have this opportunity. And because I have been given these luxuries in my life, I am determined to use what I have to do my part to make this world a better place for everyone. Appreciate what gifts you have been given and try to give back to those less fortunate than yourself. You really can make a difference, no matter how old you are or what you care about. One of my favorite quotes is by the famous British abolitionist, William Wilberforce. You may choose to look the other way, but you can never say again that you did not know. Thank you.